Welcome to the Man Cave, where we're going to be solving a few issues today. Uh, so this is obviously my bedroom, uh, and I've got two uh, TVs uh, in here. The small one there on the wall uh, for uh, entertaining myself as I fall to sleep. And we in, in the other end of the room, we have the big Pioneer Kuro for a uh, proper movie watching as well as so the big stereo setting on the world's ugliest shelf. Uh, so, uh, up until now, these two have been connected to uh, one singular HTPC, uh, an old Asus laptop uh, sitting in this uh, jumbled mess of wires uh, in the closet. Uh, and that's worked well enough while I've been using my old TV for the bed, because uh, this is the TV I replaced the other day, and uh, it's an absolutely awful TV, but uh, it has a VGA input, which I've been using because, uh, well, running VGA for 10 meters is a lot easier than running HDMI, and a lot less expensive. However, the new TV has no such luxury, it's only got HDMI and component inputs, so uh, we are out of luck and can't use my old wiring anymore. And I'm going to use that as an excuse to solve another issue. Because you can see I've got a soundbar, a Boston Acoustics thing, uh, which is entirely automatic. Uh, this thing uh, powers on when there's a sound signal applied, which is a very useful feature. It saves me the bother of ha having to turn it on and off all the time. I just pr press play on the computer and it automatically turns on. It turns off to after a while if it goes silent, which is very useful when you're falling asleep. Uh, but that comes at the disadvantage of the soundbar turning off, uh, turning on when I'm trying to listen to something on the big stereo. Uh, so I constantly have to use the remote control for the soundbar to, well, mute it. Which is a bother, because you have to turn it on. Turn it on, there we go, press mute, press mute, there we go. And having to do that every time I want to watch a movie, it resets after a while to make things even better, is annoying to say the least. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to use two computers from now on because uh, I can just plant a headless laptop on my bedside table replacing this uh, uh, not very modern touchpad keyboard, which isn't working too well. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. We are currently cloning a disk for the PC, and uh, we're going to get going. Uh, I'm hoping to be able to just clone the disk I've had in my HTPC thus far, and uh, basically make two identical Windows installations for uh, the PCs, uh, just in order to have all my media player settings and so forth set up correctly because I'm lazy and I can't be bothered to redo everything. Uh, and uh, I'm also going to bring the soundbar downstairs and replace the front panel in it because if we try and uh, use the front panel, these are touch buttons, uh, they do nothing, they just randomly break one day, uh, which isn't a big deal normally, but you need to use the front panel in order to program IR codes into this. And I really would like to be able to use a remote that's slightly better than this piece of garbage, which shipped with the same bar, because uh, this pad would buy one CR2032. It's not very powerful. So changing the volume, doing all kinds of things like that is a big bother, and it eats batteries. So. With no further ado, let's uh, uh, get the discs cloned and pull some wiring. Uh, we're going to have to get rid of the old VGA cord and I'm going to have to redo my audio. Uh, this is obviously superfluous by now, I'm never going to run VGA for this again. It's not. Uh, if, this is such a long cord that you do get a lot of distortion at 1080p anyway, it's just a, a big jumbled mess, I'd rather rather run HDMI and buy a proper cord in the future if I ever want to pull a wire into a closet again. 
uh, and uh, we're going to have to take this down and we're also going to have to replace our analog audio wire since uh, this one's obviously running into the HTPC room and I want to have one running to the bedside table. So that's a fair amount of uh, poking around to do in order to get this running. Well, let's go. All right, down to the workshop, we're waiting for the discs to clone, and I've got the Saint Bard down here with me. So, uh, this here should be a working uh, front panel board for one of these, a Paul Desert one, which had an exploded power amplifier. And uh, these are just kind of glued onto the front panel, like so, from the inside. So, we're going to have to take this apart and hope that there's any kind of, some kind of adhesive left on that there in order to stick it down and hopefully uh, we're going to have a working front panel after that. I remember do making an effort to diagnose this and I think uh, I just uh, figured out that the front panel uh, like a little IC was uh, uh, not working on it. I, I don't remember the particulars but uh, nevertheless I, re I recall making a diagnosis for replacement my board should work so let's just do that and see what happens. Oh, all right, and we're in. That was a major bother to open up because uh, I have uh, upgraded this device in some ways by uh, just adding a bunch of uh, really goopy tar-like stuff to kill resonance in the case. So this hardly sounds like plastic anymore, but that had gotten caught around the edge, so it was basically glued together. But lots of brute force later, and we are in and uh, we can clearly see that I have repaired this front panel board before. Uh, I'm not sure what I did. I think this one had an issue where it would randomly press buttons uh, regardless of uh, whether or not there was actual input uh, and uh, by just adding this shielding and uh, doing that jumper I got it to work. But uh, yeah, it's obviously fu fucked itself over again so Let's just uh, try and replace this, see if we can get this thing running. Now let's hang on. Uh, perhaps we don't even need to do that because I just ripped the control connector out and look at that. Uh, it seems my goop has backfired because that is a bunch of stuff on the connector. There seem to be little gold spots. It might not have broken contact, but surely uh, we should start by just to cleaning this up to see if that'll fix it. I had not anticipated this black goop to run out like this. I, I didn't install it on this board at all. It's just been running down the sides of the unit and splashed over. Huh. You live and you learn. Alright, I think we're starting to get somewhere. I've been using uh, petrol to clean up the connector and the uh, oh, cable and it seems to be doing uh, pretty well for itself. I started just using petrol on a q-tip and uh, scrubbing on this and then alcohol to clean off the oil, oily remains and it seemed to do a decent job. And for the connector on the board I first basically just flooded it with petrol and uh, then I used uh, isopropyl alcohol to clean up the rest uh, to get all the oily black goop out of it. Just, uh, basically wicked it up with uh, a q-tip, just rubbing a q-tip on top of that and it worked very well. I used some light scrubbing with a knife as well. But I think this ought to be decently clean now and if this front panel board actually works, uh, I think it should do so when we plug this back in. Alright, let's uh, turn on the power and it should be paid on. Let's see if we've got a living front panel or if we're going to have to... Hey, look at that. Power on. Are you going to work? Seems to be responding on some of the keys, but not all of them. The input one certainly doesn't seem to be very much alive. Yeah, they all seem to work, save for input. Huh. We have power, volume up, volume down, input is dead, 
and green, yellow, whatever that is. So we get everything except input. Uh, perhaps this thing always did that. I think that might be the case actually. So, hmm. Let's just try the other board and see if it remedies the issue. Alright, new panel installed. I made an effort to kind of label everything, but I did it wrong. But let's pair it on, see if it makes a difference. So we've got power, volume up, volume down. Hey, we've got source now. So, yeah. The old front panel board is fucked. Because this one's working fine. And I think we actually need the source button in order to program the uh, remote thing. And that's basically the only thing I want to do. So, yeah, new board going in. All right, let's tear this thing out. I don't think this is going to be pretty because it's just glued in. I recall it's not being very keen on coming out the last time I did this. Ugh. At least this board is garbage, so it doesn't matter if we ruin it. Ah, oh, this feels so wrong. So wrong. There we go. That's eight. I could have can could have made more of it. And here comes the new board. Ugh, okay, this one seems to be making more of an effort. Oh god, yeah. I don't think we're going to be reusing the proper mounting tape for this. Nope. Alright, and there we go. I've just applied some carpeting tape on top of the old stuff. And I think this ought to stick in rather well now. Thankfully we do have these alignment holes making it not entirely impossible to actually align this. And some TVs you actually don't even have any kind of alignment for this. We just use some jig in the factory, making it basically impossible to replace one of these touch panels accurately. That's not too bad. I don't think that's going to be going anywhere, because it's making an effort even going in there. Yep, that's stuck in there good. Sweet. All that's left to do is make the IO receiver over there, and we're done. All right, here comes the moment of truth. And it's saying something. Do we have power? We've got power. Volume up, volume down. Input. Mute and orange button. Sweet. That's working like new. Excellent. And there we have it. All back together again. Working as new. So I guess the lesson to be learned here is uh, if you're going to install really goopy, horrible car soundproofing stuff into your electronics, uh, you are wise not to allow it to get into flat flex connectors. Oh, this is quite disgusting indeed. But uh, this panel was bad before because the input P key never did work. So uh, we have ended up fixing this in the way it was supposed to be fixed anyway. Uh, but while doing that, the Rescue Ranger should have been done copying my hard drive, so we can finally get the new HTPC up and running, and that's going to be this Dell sitting down here. I don't recall which model number it is, but uh, it's a rather basic Dell, has some low power i5 in it and cheapo AMD graphics. Uh, it should run quite well on the cloned hard drive out of the uh, original HTPC, which is this ASUS here because uh, they are both third generation i5 processors and they, they are very similar in the hardware so let's just get the drive into the new one and see what happens oh dear i was about to install ram in the new htpc when i noticed that someone's been a bit overly uh, enthusiastic when opening the hatch because clearly the latch which goes in here has just kind of ripped these three pieces off. That's annoying. I only got two gigabyte DDR3 modules lying around, so uh, I do want more than two gigs of RAM of this thing, so we're gonna have to uh, get the motherboard out of this thing and fix that. That's an unexpected setback, but never to worry, we can get this up and running.
And that endeavor failed spectacularly, and there's one of the pins ahead of a RAM socket. So I. Uh... It's paid on now doing a mentors because I had to dig through my stash of trashy laptops and I found this lovely liquid damaged Lenovo ThinkPad. Really ugly fit this thing. Uh, but uh, I did find a 4 gig stick of RAM in it. So we can get 4 gigs in this thing uh, without using two sticks and 4 gigs really is enough for uh, a machine that's basically just going to do pure video playback so uh gonna let it run the mem test uh, hopefully it's uh, not gonna fail uh i i am a bit too concerned since there seem to be a short uh, between a couple of pins on the memory uh, memory module so uh hopefully this is gonna be fine uh and we can finally move on what if yes i spent a bunch of time trying to solder that uh, slot back together but managed to get nowhere but such is life we move on. Today has turned into tomorrow and everything has gone entirely wrong because as you can see the TV has come off of the wall. And the reason for that is uh, I tried using this uh, laptop by the bedside overnight and it bothers the hell out of me because this thing has a fan which turns on randomly during the night after I'm done with it and it can't, it's it's light enough to semi wake me up over and over again so it's entirely impossible to have it there and to top everything off uh, the HDMI driver on this machine uh, does not at all get along with my 5 meter HDMI cord so we're gonna have to apply different tactic to this uh, yet another issue which arrived uh, is uh, I've uh, been installing this Dell laptop which was initially initially gonna go and replace the PC for the big TV uh, but I have found out that it's only got 100 megabit uh, Ethernet in it which is not at all fast enough for the application for the big TV because obviously it has to swallow some rather large high def movie files so the solution for this is lying right here. I just put together these two PC mounts, which uh, uh, I just cut up a piece of scrap metal, and I'm going to mount these here and put the Dell crap top uh, mounted on the wall behind the TV. Because that enables me to use a shorter HDMI lead, mitigating the uh, HDMI issue, and it mitigates the fan noise because I can mount the Dell uh, vertically with the fan facing up like so. It uh, has a heat pipe which actually works in a vertical orientation uh, and I've removed the CD drive. So this thing is hopefully going to get rather good cooling by just sitting around uh, doing nothing. Uh, it's also a very uh, energy efficient PC. Uh, it's got some low voltage i5 in it, so it just draws a few watts sitting around. So, I'm positive that's going to be a decent solution. Now, I still need to use some kind of other input device for it than the actual laptop, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, but uh, it's it's a superior solution. The Dell actually has Bluetooth, so I could use a Bluetooth keyboard if I wanted to. But for the time being, I'm going to apply a long USB lead and my weird Apple touchpad keyboard, which works well enough. At least it's mechanical. There we have the very beautiful mount, but it's going to be obscured, so it doesn't matter. It's just attached with two screws there on either part, so i just give it a quick test. This should just slide in place. Ah, perfect. That is not a bad solution at all. Excellent. Um, it, the TV is going to obscure the entire thing. So now I just got to wire it up, get the TV back on there, and we'll be good to go. Uh, I am. Hmm, I do need to get some more power up here though, because uh, the laptop's going to need a power supply, and uh, this one for the TV, well, it's just one outlet, and it's on a switch because I always break the power to my things when I don't use it. So, I'm oh, going to have to figure that out. Ugh, annoying. But I should have some spare power outlets. Shouldn't be a big deal at all. 
All right, and there we are, pretty much completely wired up as usual. We're not going for any beauty awards, but perhaps some for style. Uh, so most of the wiring is done. I have moved all everything away from the window there, uh, making it to uh, run into the corner since we're no longer depending on going in that direction to get to the uh, HTPC. Uh, there's no issue. Let's bring the wires down in the corner, which is going to be a lot less visible. Oh, they are not going for beauty awards there either. Uh, so what we have got going on, aside from a microphone running out of battery, uh, is uh, the post block of a soundbar here just hanging by its wires. I've got a free outlet uh, splitter, the RF switch for the TV, and uh, the laptop power supply kind of hanging in uh, behind that. And everything wired up. This is the HDMI going to the TV, which will need to be replaced because it's got a blue LED in it. Uh, and uh, oh, what more? We've got this audio from some some place here. Audio. There we go. Audio going to the same bar and USB for a keyboard and mouse by the bedside. So what we need to do now is get the same bar and TV back up there, and I think everything's going to be rather well obscured. We might see a little bit of that stuff up there. At worst, but it's it's not going to be a big deal. All right, and there we have everything mounted. However, there are some issues which need to be addressed uh, because uh, while this setup actually does work, uh, I just turned the PC off, and uh, that's an issue because the power button is inside the lid. So you need to take the PC out every time you turn it off. You can wake it up from the USB keyboard, but if you have a power failure or something, the battery is screwed in it, uh, you have to monger it out of there, which is rather annoying, so we need to fix that. Also, the wireless connectivity of this uh, device does not seem to be the best, uh, because it's having issues connecting to your wireless AP that is uh, sitting pretty much in that corner on the other side of a very thin wall, so... Uh, I need to figure out a way to add a better antenna or two to this device. Uh, beyond that, though, it does uh, work quite well. Uh, the PC becomes quite uh, perfectly hidden behind the TV. Uh, we have this USB lead, which is visible. It's difficult to get around because uh, this is the only USB 2 port on the machine. And I think you can't wake it from the USB 3 port on the other side, so uh, you may do. But uh, be uh, really, it could have turned out a lot worse. I don't mind this at all. Just need to fix the uh, connectivity issues. Oh, yes, and uh, uh, I have learned a lesson, and that is that it is a very bad idea to migrate from an SSD Windows installation to a mechanical drive. I've just uh, uh, straight off copied over the files from an SSD to an ancient mechanical drive in the uh, Dell back there, and uh, it is so slow that uh, the PC is practically unusable. You, it, it'll take minutes for a right-click menu to appear, which is not fine for an i5-based PC. So I think I am going to sacrifice uh, my MacBook down here, because this is a 2006 MacBook, which, as you might be able to tell, has been replaced by a more modern HP tablet PC. Uh, this has a decent uh, 120 gig SSD in it, uh, which uh, is not seeing a lot of use anymore. So, rest in peace, MacBook. Your days have been numbered. You have served me faithfully for many a year. All right, we are getting somewhere. So, uh, initially, I wanted to de lid this thing since I had to redo the Wi Fi antennas anyway, but uh, uh, that's uh, proved to be impossible because uh, it would not boot without the monitor connected, it would just beep at you and turn off. So that was out of the question, um, but then I figured why not put the power switch on the outside so that I can at least turn it on without having to rip the whole thing out. And well that uh, proved to be a bit of an issue because it uh, will not allow you to use a power button when the lid is closed. Uh, if it thinks the lid is closed, then it will not react to the power button at all. 
However, that proved to be a rather easily solved <laughs> issue in itself because the lid sensor is actually on the power button PCB. So by taking the power button module 8, uh, it is removed from the little magnet which is in the hinge there and uh, the PC would uh, always think the lid is open and the power button would work. Which is excellent, except that means the backlight is also always on and it thinks this monitor is visible and usable. And uh, of course I, it's not going to ever be, it, we can't even open the lid because the power button's there. So I have constructed this. This is a lid open switch and it is a magnetic strip out of the fridge which is sitting on top of the uh, magnet sensor. So uh, when the lid is closed, which is it by now, is just springing down, uh, the power button will not work. Present that does nothing. However, if we spring the lid open switch, press the button, it turns on. And since it now thinks the lid is closed, we are getting picture on our monitor. So, <laughs> uh, this is turning out pretty well, better than I dared expect. Uh, I would have preferred having to just had this uh, entirely delidded. Uh, but uh, as far as solutions go, this certainly could be a lot worse. Uh, I, of course, have also improved the Wi-Fi antennas and I have sacrificed the battery in favour of that. So if we flip this up, I'm ruining everything. Uh, we've got a couple of Wi-Fi antennas I ripped out of an old wireless router. This just hooked straight to the Wi-Fi card in the laptop and uh, they are considerably better performing than the antennas in the screen, probably because they're a bit three times larger and uh, not uh, here stuck between ground of a display and ground of a case so these just were not given a very fair chance they're designed to be used with the screen open and of course we've got an ssd installed there eight the old mac and uh, it's a bit of an un pointlessly high end ssd but it's what i've got lying around a crucial m500 120 gigabytes so i think we're now ready to put the lid back on this and give it another go. I think this might be the final install because I am positive this is gonna work great. All right, I have wired everything up and here comes the moment of truth where you can't see a bloody thing because it's so dark. So let's open the lid, press the power button, blue LED in the, heat, in the HDMI cord. Are we gonna get picture? We've got picture. Excellent. And this thing is quiet without a mechanical hard drive. There's not a sound coming out of that. And we've even got audio. Right, let's see if the network is actually going to work this time. Ah, would you look at that. That is internet video playing with a horrible lagginess uh, and uh, just... Uh, grinding to a halt. So we certainly have solved the internet connectivity issue and I need to pause this video because I'm hearing myself is confusing me. So I think that's going to be pretty much it for this PC. I'm going to have to still replace the HDMI lead with one that's a, a bit less horrible and blue LED equipped because that is going to be uh, rather annoying in the middle of the night. I can't cover everything up with tape, sadly. But beyond that, <laughs> oh, uh, that, that is that is a sight. We've certainly moved up a bit in the quality area. This is certainly going to be a much more practical solution than having everything run off of one PC. And uh, I did some power tests, and even if I don't put this extra PC to sleep, well it uses uh, 7 watts of power uh, while it's just sitting around, so really there are old devices which use that much in standby, so there isn't much of a loss there at all. So I don't even need to feel guilty about it. Excellent, so all that remains 
is to get this old thing back where it belongs. To the place where it is never seen, but only heard. Come on. There you go. Into the closet you go. Ah, to the place where you have lived for years. I don't know, perhaps one year by now. There we go. HTPC installed. Uh, you know, actually, I'm considering perhaps some of the networking issues might have something to do with my absolutely ancient uh, networking gear here in this part of the house because this is garbage. This is like a wireless draft and router from, I don't know, 2007. 150 megs and this is also another ancient draft and writer which has broken wireless and is just acting as a gigabit switch so I'm just gonna rip these horrible things out and uh, put this thing in them in its place it's wireless box with uh, uh, integrated gigabit switch so it should be a rather more efficient solution because I can tell you these are Running rather warm, this probably draws about, uh, has to be up towards 10 watts if you include the AC adapter losses. And the AC adapter for this is not the most modern thing either. It's this, oh yes, proper Chinesium from 2005. Yeah, garbage. Ah, uh, there we go. Much better to believe that one box can replace all of that garbage. Jeez. Unbelievable. The progress of technology marches on. All right, let's connect up to the prop one. See what happens. Well, that was nowhere near as easy as it should be because the Dell 1703 network adapter in this computer is entirely retarded. Uh, it would connect to the new wireless LAN, it would get an IP from the DHCP server, but it wouldn't connect anywhere, not even to the device, uh, not even to the wireless router itself. And uh, googling around, a considerable amount revealed that uh, you need to mess around with the 802.n bandwidth setting. Most people seem to have an issue where if they have it to the 20 or 40 megahertz auto setting, it won't work. In this case, it's the opposite. It was set to 20 megahertz by default and, well, that caused it to break entirely. Setting it to auto made it work even though it's a 20 megahertz network. Very strange indeed. But we have got it running, I do believe, and I've Pay copied a big file to the clipboard. Let's paste it to the desktop and see what kind of speeds we got previously. We got about uh, 600 kilobytes per second. And uh, now we're getting eight megabytes a second. So that has solved the networking issue. Excellent. Well, that's almost as good as a 100 megabit LAN. Ah, well, sweet. That is not bad performance at all. That's probably the fastest network connection I've got in the house wirelessly anyway. What a, what a nice result. I'm happy. Ah, and there we have it. Finally installed so I can watch dumb stain a podcast at night as I'm falling asleep. In very, very low brightness indeed. Because that blue light you're seeing behind the vat is a very dim blue LED. It's barely, it's barely even visible to the naked eye. So that is the ultimate goal of this setup. A very, very dark, very quiet TV for nighttime use. It is, of course, running a flux to reduce the uh, blue out, but this is really, really, really dark. Just uh, how should we put that into perspective? That's, that's the clock, which is also very, very dim. Let's just turn on the 7 watt, <laughs> seven watt CFL light cannon for reference there. So yeah, that's it. I'm happy. I hope you found this somewhat enlightening, even though we are not living up to my 
fancy new production standards in the slightest. So, thank you for watching. Cheerio. Well, this thing really is very dim. This is pretty much what it uh, looks like to the naked eye. You can just barely make out the, the image with my settings. Everything's cranked way down.